Hi everyone, my name is Miss Maria and I am one of the engineering teachers here at the Elementary Institute of Science. Today we are going to be talking about stethoscopes. Now you may say, oh I thought that was something a doctor uses, so wouldn't that be a biology topic? And you would be right. But doctors were not the ones who designed and made the stethoscope. It was engineers who knew about both biology and engineering concepts. These engineers are called biomedical engineers, and we are going to learn a little bit more about them today. So when someone is sick or hurting, they usually go to a doctor or a nurse to make them feel better. However, these doctors and nurses get help from people called bioengineers. These engineers work together to create machines, devices, and other technologies that are used in hospitals by doctors and nurses. For bioengineers, it is important for them to learn about the human body in engineering because they must know both to create the best equipment for hospitals. A stethoscope is just one example of a medical device. Let us look at some others. So we have something called an x-ray, an MRI, and an ultrasound. And all these um, devices take pictures of the inside of your body so doctors know what is going on inside of it. We also have prosthetics, which means an artificial device that replaces a missing body part. We also have some metal pins that hold bones and muscles in place when they are damaged, and you can see that here. We also have a pacemaker, which is really important because it goes inside of the heart when someone's heart does not beat correctly. And then lastly, we have a hearing aid, which is for people who have trouble with their, with their hearing. And these are just um, some examples of medical devices and there are so many others. So now let us look closely at the different parts of the stethoscope and how it works. A stethoscope is used by doctors to detect heart and breathing sounds and see if there are any abnormalities. Now let us look at the different parts of the stethoscope. So first, we have the chest piece. And this is made of two different parts, the bell and the diaphragm. The diaphragm is the flat metal disc that excels in capturing the higher pitch range of sounds, which includes normal breathing sounds and heartbeats. And then we have the bell, which is the smaller part. It's the hollow bell-shaped piece of metal with a tiny hole on the top. This part is better at picking up low-pitch sounds, such as heart murmurs, which is not a good sound to hear. So this whole part helps the doctor to hear your heart. So next time you go to the doctor, notice how they will use both sides of the chest piece to listen to your heart. Next we have our tubing, so that's the black part. Um, this, is this, this is where the sounds are picked up and they travel through this tube until, the, until they split up into the two channels that you see here so that the listener can hear the sound in both ears. And then lastly, we have our ear tips. And these are made of soft rubber, which is for comfort, but also to create a seal that helps block out all the surrounding noise. This is to help the doctor hear the sounds accurately. So now it's time for our activity. We are going to be making our very own stethoscope. It's going to look something like this. Yours may look a little different with different um, colors of all these different materials, but it'll look something like this. So let's go through our materials. First, you're going to need some scissors. Then you're gonna need some duct tape, two PVC pipe um, tubes, elbows, and some aquarium tubing, okay? So first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut our aquarium tubing to the right size. So how you want to know what the right size is, is you want to um, attach one end to your ear and then the other end to your heart or to someone else's heart if you want to try that. But that's how big you want your aquarium tubing to be. So keep your hand here and then we're going to just cut that. Okay, and I'm gonna set this aside and this is how long my aquarium tubing is. And then next, I have some cut up pieces of duct tape right here next to me. Um, so you just wanna do that as well. Um, just cut a bunch of pieces and we're going to use that to attach our aquarium tubing to our elbows, okay? So um, you're gonna take one of your elbows and you're going to put one end of the aquarium tubing inside of the elbow. 
then you're going to take a piece of your tape and attach it. So I'm going to attach it to the best of my ability. And the most important thing here is that your aquarium tubing does not fall out of the tube, uh, does not fall out of the elbow. So I'm gonna use as many pieces of tape as I need to in order to make sure that it's stuck in there. The other important thing that you have to remember is there should be no holes. So I shouldn't see any holes here because then that's going to affect our sound travel. And we're not gonna be able to hear the heart. So I'm just gonna wrap it really securely and just like that. So you can see that I have no holes at all. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same thing with the other end and attach it to the other PVC pipe. This may be a little tricky, so you can ask for some help from an adult or someone around you to get that tubing inside and nice and secure. All right, so I'm all done. And there you go, there's my stethoscope. So what you wanna do in order to test it out, you wanna put one end to your ear and the other end to your heart. And listen real closely and be super quiet so you can hear your heartbeat. Thank you for joining in today. I hope you had fun um, building your stethoscopes and I hope you learned a lot as well. Make sure you share some pictures of your stethoscopes, TIS's social media pages. Bye.